Good evening, everyone. I'm Eddie Bozio. Thanks for joining us this evening for a discussion with Lenny Henry about his diversity roadmap. This event is brought to you by the TV Collective and Ravensbourne. Some of you may know that Lenny Henry made an absolute game-changing speech at BAFTA recently about the lack of black and Asian people in broadcast media, and he showcased his proposal for change. We know he has the ear of the culture minister, Ed Vasey, and tonight's an opportunity to hear more about that proposal and to feed your thoughts back. Before Lenny goes to the, DM, before Lenny goes to the DCMS in the summer, welcome Lenny. Thank you very much, it's nice to be here. By the way, I just want to say it's, it's not just me, I'm part of a group of people who've been thinking about this for a long time. And I know that there are lots of groups all over the country having the same thoughts. So basically this, it's a, a group of people who are all thinking, how can we, how can we make change happen? And what can, we, what can we do to help? And I think the more we start to think like that in terms of clustering and networking and grouping, um, we're, 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 we will see change. Well, what's the kind of change you're looking to see? What would, what would success look like for you? Success would mean uh, black and Asian artists not leaving the country in droves because there's nothing for them to do here. Success for me would be for broadcasters to walk through uh, into any main um, current affairs newsroom <laughs> and see some people of colour behind the scenes as well as in fr on, on the mic. Success for me, for me would be to go to a meeting uh, in a mainstream television broadcaster and see people that look like me uh, behind the desk making decisions about what kind of programs get made and why. Mm -hmm. Why should this program be funded? Um, it, you know, we are 14.5 or so percent of the country and we are not holding a mirror up to society uh, in the way this industry is run. Uh, and particularly in London, you know, 40 percent of uh, the population in London is BAME mm. and that is not reflected in the workforce in our industry. Mm. Now let's take you back to the first speech you made on this topic in, back in, in 2008. 2008 yes. And you said um, um, you were looking for change then because you said you want this speech to be a catalyst you don't want to feel that coming to this speech is just an opportunity to tick another box. Do you think there's been box ticking since then? I think that um, it's a terrible, terrible shame that we haven't moved further down the road uh, the, 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 wh than where we are. I mean, if you think of all of those people from before uh, who worked so hard to try and get the diversity issue in everybody's minds, in everybody's newspapers, it's such a terrible shame that all of those efforts have fallen by the wayside. And you've got to wonder, what's it going to take for these doors to open? Uh, what's interesting now is I feel that having spoken to people like Ed Vasey and uh, the Director General of the BBC and Peter Finch from ITV, having spoken to these people, I get the sense that the door is opening and there's a lot of people standing on the edge who want to jump in and I'm saying, and a group of us are saying, the water's warm, just, go, just, <laughs> just, jump, in. just jump, stop waiting for somebody else <laughs> to jump. It's like we're all like this, everybody's <laughs> like this going, shall I, well you go first. And things are happening, but it's real slow. Okay, let's look at the speech that you gave, the barnstorming speech I referred to uh, earlier this year. Let's just take a look at what you said. I haven't seen this. Between 2006 and 2012, the number of BAMEs working in the UK TV industry has declined by 30.9%. Creative Skillset conducted a census that shows quite clearly that black, Asian and minority ethnic representation in the creative industries in 2012 was just 5.4% its lowest point since they started taking the census. That's an appalling percentage, more so because the majority of our industry is still based in and around London, right here, where there's a BAME population of 40%. Want some more evidence? Here's another rocket propelled statistical grenade for you. In the last three years, the total of number of BAME people in the industry has fallen by 2,000, while the industry as a whole has grown by over 4,000. Or to put it another way, for every black and Asian person who lost their job, more than two white people were employed. Now that's the bit that really got me. For every black person that left the industry, two white people were employed. Yeah, and I, I, I have to say that um, the media professionals that I've been talking to have said, you know, it's not about you, Lenny, it's not about us, it's about the 2,000 people that have had to leave their jobs because there's nothing down for them. Mm -hmm. The name's not down, they're not getting in. <laughs> And how do we reverse that? How do we change that? And I think that the plan that was put forward might be a beginning to that. 
Um, but it's gonna, we're going to need a lot of help, and we're going to need people to get behind us. Now, you've said you believe the door's open. I mean, what convince you, convinces you of that? Because we've been here before, and we've heard all the polite noises, we've heard all the initiatives, we've, you know, it's, we've been round and round in circles. Why are you so convinced things well, I, are really going to change? Well, I think that um, I, I like an initiative, I, I like training <laughs> schemes. <laughs> I think mentoring's I great. Like the daughter to marry I like all that stuff, but I really, really think that people are getting behind the idea of work. How do you make work happen? How do you make projects happen? How do we employ people? Because that's what we're talking about here. We don't want 14 diverse departments mm. <laughs> with people sitting there all miserable going, how do, we, <laughs> how do we change stuff? We want jobs. We want to create work. And I think that the people that are running things are starting to feel the same way. I've spoken really? To, I've spoken to, yeah, I've spoken to Tony Hall, Director General of the BBC, yeah. and he's very interested in leadership. He's very interested in uh, changing the, the, the demographic of the decision makers. He, he has this kind of language in his mind about how do, mm -hmm. we, how do we get a new strand of leadership? Now, I think people are out there. I think there are people out there oh, who, yeah. who've trained, who can do the job. And he's starting to think in terms of that, as well as outreach at entry level. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, entry level is okay, but we need to start doing a pincer movement from above. Mm -hmm. We need people who have worked in the industry for years and years and years, who know what they're doing, who have simply been overlooked, overlooked or have hit a glass ceiling. <coughs> it's those people that need to be invited back into the industry. And I've seen enough evidence from some of these people, some of these leaders, to, to think that maybe it's going to change now. Mm. There are, there's a lot of scepticism out there about that. Um, for example, the BBC is having um, an <coughs> ethnic version of their Women's Specialists Day. Yeah. Um, and I spoke to a few people about it and they said, well, why are they doing that? Why don't they just look at the people who are already working at the BBC? And if they really want to look for specialists, just look at the, the people they've got. The people they've got and the people who've left within the last five to ten years. There's a load of expertise there. I guess I guess the thing is to be doing something while they're thinking about what they really want to do. Mm. <laughs> I think it's a sense I think there's a sense of we've got to do something. Okay, that's a good thing to do. Mm. But in the meantime, we've got to reach out to those people that we know can do the job. You know, mm. we know there's endless people who can do these jobs, mm. who can take these roles. Um, but in the meantime, let's not slag people off for, for making an attempt to, no. to do something. No, we have to be careful. They have to be careful that it's not a Band-Aid. Yeah. It's not just a plaster against something, hoping that people won't notice. You know? No, I don't think people are, are slagging them off for the initiatives, but they're saying, we've seen these initiatives before. Yeah, initiatives uh, are something that we're really good at. We're mm. good at initiatives, and we're good at gathering data. <laughs> and I think that all of that stuff is plate spinning to mm. make people think that things are happening mm. when actually all people want is to work mm. all people want is to be invited to the dance mm. and uh, when they start doing that when they start being inclusive rather than exclusive you'll see a massive change are you going to put a time scale on that well how weird <laughs> that um una at mm -hmm. uh, the bafta speech said let's reconvene in july and when i met tony hall at the bbc he said let's talk at the end of april because, you know, we're in a pre-election year, mm -hmm. uh, charter renewals going on. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think the people want to get their ducks in a row. Mm. I think people want to get their ducks in a row and go, look, look what we're doing with diversity. We're trying to do this. We want to affect change. Mm. We are doing these things. You know, Tony Hall wants to be seen as somebody who's leading from the front. And the BBC needs to lead from the front. Absolutely. Because they're the, they're the main game in town, right? Mm -hmm. So if the BBC decide they're going to do something, everybody's going to follow. Mm. And... Uh, so I was very impressed by that. End of April, we're going to meet up to talk about what's going to happen. And, OK, you have your plan. I know you don't want to go into the detail. No, of it, I well, I've, run, I've run me through it. the. I talked about it in the speech. Run me through it's the basically, plan. Run me through your proposal. There's a, prese there's a precedence for this, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, Channel 4 had a black and Asian department. Yeah. The BBC had a black and Asian department, and these things have been shelved or you know, elbowed out because of, to make more money available for things and to spread it out. Oh, well, yeah. we're just going to spread it out. Mm -hmm. um, so there's been a precedent for this. And what we're talking about is ring fencing money. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about the regions. If you think about, you know, Scotland has a regional spend. Wales has a regional spend. The, the North has a regional spend. We're talking about, think about BAME, Black, Asian, Minority, Ethnic, as a... I hate that word. It's balmy. <laughs> 
It's balmy. <laughs> what does it Somebody mean? Said it, black Asian minority ethnic. <sighs> balmy. <laughs> anyway. Um, it's, it's creating, a, I, I guess, a metaphorical region mm. uh, and placing it somewhere like Birmingham or Manchester or something mm -hmm. and may, perhaps creating a, a BAME commissioner mm -hmm. and a couple of green lighters and a couple of execs and a couple of producers mm -hmm. and saying, this is a region, we're going to ring fence some money and you're going to be working with independents and in-house mm -hmm. to create BAME programs. And also, not just BAME programs, you know, within reason, you can make anything you want as long as a percentage of you are BAME. Well, how's that actually going to work? I mean, if there's a pot of money... I don't know! <laughs> I'm a comedian! What are you asking me for? <laughs> what I do know is that mm. we've put... We've, not just me, but a group of media professionals have put this thing together. Mm. And I've, I read it and thought, this makes sense to me. Mm. This makes sense. If you treat BAMEs like a region, like Wales, like mm. Scotland, where, you know, if we're 14.5% of the country and Scotland is 9% of the country, why wouldn't you say, give BAMEs a, a ring-fenced spend mm. so that they can make programs too, so that they can contribute to the cultural conversation of our nation? No, I think that's important. And it's just the detail of that and, and a kind of separate pot, do all the black creative companies just pitch there if they want to pitch for World War One? pitch anything, but what would be interesting would be, wouldn't it be more, wouldn't it be interesting to have an open door to pitch at? Mm. To go, look, you know, um, I'm pitching here, but, but I'm also going to meet Eddie at the BAME mm. uh, region because I know he's looking for this kind of programming. Yeah. I know he's looking for a new comedy or he's looking for a different take on this current affairs issue or, mm. or he's thinking about this drama thing or mm. whatever. You know, there'll be a, a dedicated door where you can bring your stuff and know that you're going to be heard because it, people like you are there waiting for, waiting for a, a, a decent pitch. Yeah, I, I, I see some of the advantages of that, but I can see some of the disadvantages that you could end up with people Isn't that going, racist? <laughs> <laughs> well, that aside, people going to going, ah, Eddie, there's your door. I won't see, I, you don't come and pitch. You can still pitch wherever just, you want. Yeah, but, but you, know, you, know, you be, go and do be, your bit there. There'll be, a, there'll be a, an, an ear and some eyeballs mm. that are ready to look at your idea and they'll have some money to spend. Mm. Whereas, you know, if you're pitching with everybody else, if you're going to Hartswood, if you're going to 224, if you're mm. going to Hattrick or any of these other guys, mm. um, they've got a certain amount of money to spend and they're looking at everybody. They're not just looking at you. Mm. So it might be that if there's a BAME ring fence pot of money, like there was when Farouk was at Channel 4 or mm. whatever, you can go there and go, I've got this idea, but I want to do a documentary about this. Yeah. You know, there'll be a set of money to spend on that yeah. idea. And all you've got to do is make sure your idea is good enough. There'll still be standards to meet. Yeah. It won't be. <laughs> I pulled this idea out of my, out of my ass. <laughs> this morning. <laughs> I worked on it for an hour. You know, they've got to do it because they're like me. <laughs> exactly. It won't be like that. No. You'll still have to meet standards and it'll still have to be really good. Yeah. But isn't the problem slightly different? Uh, let, let me give you a scenario. I was talking to some friends who are in the production area and they wanted to film children. And they chose... Uh, in what regard did they want to film children? <laughs> Not that Should much. I call the police? <laughs> in a, no, they, you know, it was, a, it, was a, it was a film about kids and, and young people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went to film and they were told, you know, it's got to be diverse. So they went to Bristol. But the rushes came back and they were, you know, a load of white kids. Damn. And in Bristol? Portugal. Yeah. How did they do that? I don't know. You <laughs> take some practice to do that. Yeah, yeah. And You've got to work hard to find just a bunch of... Exactly. That's hard. Exactly. But fortunately, the channel commissioner pushed back and said, what are you doing? That doesn't yeah. represent... Exactly. So they had to reshoot. So it, surely... I mean, the problem seemed to be that people in those positions of, you know, researchers, APs, commissioners, don't see things as you and I might see. As we, as we keep saying... Until the, the demographic of the decision makers changes, Absolutely. you won't, in, behind the camera, you will not see change in front of the camera. Yeah. We need to utilize the vast amount of talent that we have already mm. of people who are script editors, producers, researchers. We need to use all that talent so that we can have a more uh, in inclusive and demographically fair a uh, group of people making the decisions about what we see on our screens. You wouldn't get that in America. That wouldn't happen in America, I don't But how, how is that going to happen in the UK? Because look at the people who are in post, the people who are advertised in broadcasters, 
playing the musical chairs, mm. they're going to have to lose some of their jobs well, to make room for people like you and me to well, make you know, decisions. If, if they're gonna, well, you're certainly going to need to interview more people for those jobs. You're certainly going to have to include um, a broader... If you're thinking diversely, mm. you can't just... Maybe you'll have to interview people of colour as a matter of course. Bit and like we're, the, talking about, we're talking about the Rooney Rule here, yeah. where you have to see people mm -hmm. rather than uh, that it be a whim of whoever's doing the job. You mm -hmm. know? And, and we have a problem in, in this country because a lot of, a lot of um, people who make those decisions work with, within the circle of social capital. Mm. So they call them, it's the people they know. Absolutely. It's always the people they know. Absolutely. The people you headhunt or the people you know or that you've been recommended, mm. it's, which, is, which is cool. And we probably do the same, mm. but that needs to change. Well, people have to step out of that comfort zone. That needs to change, and, and it risk. needs to be more inclusive. And you know, the Rooney Rule, I think, states that you have to see yeah. people of colour yeah. for this job that are qualified. Mm. And if they're good enough to do the job, you should you know, offer them the job. Mm. You, should, you shouldn't offer them the job if they're crap, no. but if they're good, you should offer them the job. And that probably needs to happen here. Mm. There ought to be a law. <laughs> I keep saying that to Ed Basie. There ought to be a law, damn it. And, and how does he respond? I think, he, I think he's, uh, he's being very cautious, but I think he, he, like everybody else, is tired of going to these things and seeing it very unfair mm -hmm. uh, demographically, racially, gender. You know, it's wrong and it needs to change. And, and I think Ed Basie is pushing because he wants there to be change in our lifetimes. Mm. I think one of the saddest things... A friend of mine said at the, ba uh, the BAFTA, during the BAFTA Q&A, which was like a bun fight, um, he said one of the saddest things I said was that, oh, it, wouldn't it be great to see something in my lifetime? I'd mm. like something to happen before I'm dead, I said. And I'm 55 now. And that was a really, I, I, it just came out of my mouth. Mm. I think it'd be great if this happened in my lifetime. And we could be the generation that pushed this so that it does happen. But we have to be together on it, mm. not just the people in the industry. Mm. But I think there's a responsibility as well for the audience. Mm. I think all of those people in the audience who watch these shows, who complain that there aren't enough black and Asian and gay and women and people with disabilities and transgender, all of those people who watch these programs and complain about it to themselves um, need to start lobbying. They mm. need to start writing letters. They need to start emailing. Mm -hmm. And I think at some point soon there's going to be a campaign and we want everybody to get behind it and write letters to Parliament, write letters to government, write letters to your MP, and say, we think it's time there was a change. Mm -hmm. um, let's do something soon. And there'll be details of that on various websites, and uh, I hope you guys will be involved too. But there will be a call, of a, a call to arms. Nothing happens without conflict. Mm -hmm. And this is our time to stop moaning to ourselves and to take the argument public. So what are you advocating here? Are you saying, you're, you're talking about an email campaign? I think there's going to be an email campaign. And I think uh, we're hoping that Raven, Ravensbourne and TV Collective will, will get behind it. Mm -hmm. Because we want, we want the people, we want the audience to get involved as well as the industry to get involved. Because we think change is imminent. Mm. And um, they listen if we're all together saying stuff. Mm. They don't listen if it's one-on-one. -on -one. They listen if we're all together. And we need to get together on this. There's also call for people to stop paying their license fee. What do you think of that? There are people saying, well, look, we're not being served by the major channels. We're not being served by the BBC. Why are we paying our license fee? Well, I haven't said, no, 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 not, no, no. I'm we're not saying not, you're saying. We're not advocating that. I mean, it's a move, isn't it? I, I think that um, there is a degree of uh, eyeballs, black and Asian eyeballs that are moving away from terrestrial television. Uh, the broadcasters should be worried about that. ITV should be worried about losing um, advertising money. If those people are turning to cable TV and Sky TV to get what they want, Fresh Prince, I want to watch Fresh Prince every day, I want to watch my wife and kids, I want to see some black people in some things, I want to see mm. some Indian people. If people are turning away from the terrestrial channels, they should be concerned and they should be thinking about how do I woo that audience back. Mm. The way you woo that audience back is to start thinking in, in terms of the way the American broadcasters think, which is to try and make the demographic fairer. You know, what they've noticed, particularly, <clears throat> um, there's, a, there's some research that states that ABC have noticed that their ratings have gone up since they started to think about their racial demographic. Mm -hmm. You know, 
their, you know, how many women do they have in a show? How many Hispanics? How many African Americans? They've noticed that their ratings go up when it's a fairer representation of the national demographic. And we need to start thinking about that. Now, we do it in the soaps, uh -huh. and we do it on children's, uh -huh. but in current affairs and in comedy in particular, comedy is appalling. We're not doing that. It's really uh -huh. low. And those figures need to come up. But you're saying, let's get together, let's, the doors open, and other people have already had enough, and they're saying, I'm not going to pay my license. Well, that's their prerogative. Mm -hmm. But what I'm, what I'm saying is, to have a big effect, there needs to be a big, big push mm. to get this door open. You don't move a glass, or it, <laughs> somebody said the other day, a steel ceiling mm -hmm. <laughs> with a glass ceiling just under it. Mm -hmm. you, don't move a, you don't move a steel ceiling by just one person doing this. Mm. You need... You need thousands of people going, we want change and we want it now. Mm. So you don't advocate the threat of, you know, boycotting the license fee? Of, that, yeah, that's not you know your... what, if you're going to do it, do it. But what I would say is there's, uh, people are already turning away from terrestrial television mm. and the broadcasters have noted that that is a duly noted thing. Mm -hmm. And we need to start telling people what we want and saying, actually, this is a demand. We want it. Yeah. OK. Can I take you back to a quote uh, Norman Beaton made? that echoes some, some of what you said. He's saying, we need producers, directors, executives, people who look like us. Unless we control this thing, they're going to keep excluding us. He's advocating separate channels, separate, well, something like what you seem to be advocating. I disagree money, with so. Norman. Mm -hmm. Norman and I used to have many, many um, conversations, <laughs> quite loud conversations about this, because I kept saying, <clears throat> we want to be at what we're trying to do is level the playing field for the mainstream. We want to be included in the mainstream. We don't want to be in our own little stream over here. We want to be at the, in the big stream swimming with the big boys, with mm. the big fish. Mm. We want BAME, men, women. We want to be over there broadcasting and joining in with the national convers cultural conversation. Absolutely. But... That's not happened. What I've noticed is that with the advent of the... World Wide Web, hmm. there are groups of people just going, do you know what, I'm tired of waiting to be asked. Exactly. I'm going to make my own things over here. That's great. But that's still going to take a while to, to gain a level of proficiency so that we're competing with what's happening on the mainstream. The mainstream is where it's at. But there are exceptions. The, I mean, internet, the internet is generating great talent, hmm. and great, but it's still the internet. Yeah. I think we need to be thinking about you know, maybe we need to stop thinking parochially. We need to stop thinking about just the UK. Mm -hmm. And we need to start thinking about appealing globally. There's a global yeah. audience out there. And perhaps that's the way forward with the internet, with the World Wide Web, is this is a global thing. This isn't just me making television and programs for a very small audience. Let's think big. So, for instance, you know, things like Mandem on the Wall mm -hmm. has, got, has garnered a huge following. And they're thinking globally. They've got American interest. You know, there are programs being made by small teams of people mm -hmm. that are getting interest from America and Europe. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, if you think about Jamal Edwards and SBTV. Absolutely, I was going to say. B the BBC are courting him, ITV are courting him. They but he make, doesn't need them they, No, he doesn't need them. And that's the thing, you know, the young people who are making TV programs in the exactly. bedroom, bedroom are going, I don't need to be, I don't even understand yeah. mainstream broadcasting. Exactly. Why All I know I is that I can go out with my camera and make a program, and that's, if I was a About mainstream my broadcaster, passion. that's what I'd be frightened of. Yeah. I'd be frightened of the equivalent of indie rock, mm. people in their bedrooms with their computers and a, and a MIDI and a, and, a, and a keyboard and a guitar going, mm. if I could figure out how to do this, I could make my own thing. Well, well people are doing that with television now. That's the way the world is moving, and what you seem to be advocating is trying to get back into the mainstream. Yeah. It's spent years rejecting people. Yeah, but my, I, I'm, I can only speak for, I can only wave my own flag. Yeah. What's happening is young people are, are doing it themselves. Absolutely. Mandem on the wall are doing it themselves. Yeah. Jamal Edwards is doing it himself, yeah. and God bless them and go with God, mm. right? What I'm talking about is the two, for the, on behalf of the 2,000 people who can do the job, yes. who can produce, who can line produce, who can exec, who can script edit, who are more than capable of green lighting, I'm talking about those guys. Oh. 2,000 people have left the industry, why? There's enough work, isn't there? Do we need to make more work? Do we need to be more inclusive in the work we're making? Current affairs, why aren't there more black and Asian broadcasters in current, affair, mm. current affairs? Why does Simon Albury walk into the Today programme yeah, and I the that. only black or Asian person around is the person who says, Thank do you, you want a cup of tea? Yeah. There is nobody behind the glass 
producing the program. Yeah. Why, why is that? But, but there are concerns that having a separate pot of money for black and Asian people is ghettoizing them to a degree. Because you're it's saying- It's like saying selling out, isn't it? Yeah, I want to sell out. <laughs> I want it to be packed. Um, no, what it is, is it's, um, okay, don't think about the ghetto. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when Channel 4 had their black and Asian department, people didn't sort of, they, they just got on with making programs. When London, uh -huh. Trevor Phillips at London Weekend, uh -huh. the thousand people that I'm, who we're representing, are, just want to work. work. They don't want to retrain and be a cab driver. <laughs> they want to make programs. They want to make programs. So if there's a pot of money, a ring-fenced group of money, with attached producers and execs and green lighters waiting to make programs, waiting to be pitched to, waiting to employ people who are good at their jobs, mm. who have got recommendations, who they know they can depend on, and who also are, are reaching out to new talent to bring new people in and train them. If there's a dedicated ring-fenced pot of money that's mm -hmm. in the millions, remember, then why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you have that? So who wouldn't go to those people and go, yeah, I can do that. I can how, do that job. How does this differ, your proposal, how does that differ from Channel 4's Alpha Fund, which is a pot of money for new people starting out to make, you know, kind of first cut films? Um, well, that's about, uh, well, that's great, and that's about, but that's about new work. It sounds to me like it's about an, it's an initiative <laughs> for new people <laughs> to make new things. I'm talking about... Uh, something broader than that. Mm. I'm talking about the mainstream. I'm talking about people being invited into the mainstream to make, to, to be part of the programs that they're making anyway. Okay. And also to be creating BAME programs mm. specifically for a BAME audience. But you know, I'm talking about people behind the scenes. Why wouldn't you, a BAME broadcasters can make any program they want as long as the people behind the cameras mm -hmm. are, you know, there'd be a percentage of people that they'd have to hit mm. um, on cameras, on sound, on lights, um, in the offices that would be AME. How, how big is the black and Asian production community at the moment? I mean, I can think of about five companies led by black and Asian people. Juniper, um, I've got a list of them here. Read it out, <laughs> Read let the people know. <laughs> um, there's, oh my God, I've lost my page. I'll find them for you because- You know what? The prop It'll there, be there small. About five. It is small. It'll be a small group of people, but I bet you, I bet you mm -hmm. if this ring-fenced pot of money went forward mm. and there was a BAME region that was created to, to invite the BAME uh, program making community into this mainstream of program making, I bet you this would trigger the creation of dozens of new independents. Mm. And this is probably what we're banking on. We're banking on group people, all of these people with vast amounts of experience yeah. to go, okay, Fantastic, I'm gonna make a production company, I'm gonna make docs, boom, I'm gonna make comedies, I'm gonna make drama, I'm gonna compete with current affairs, mm -hmm. I wanna make this. You know, suddenly you'd see people going, fantastic, mm -hmm. There's, the door is open, I'm allowed to participate in this cultural conversation. Suddenly you'd see a lot more production companies spring up. At the moment, you know why there's five? Because they only need five. Yeah. There's well, like they five are. pound for all they of five are. production companies. They are. BAFTA nominated Smoking Dogs, who made the Martin Luther King film Marvelous. last year. Paul Blake at Maroon, the guys at Hey Buddy, Jamie DeCruz at Acme, and a small company I heard of a few years ago called Crucial. I don't know quite uh, what happened to them. Marvelous. <laughs> but you know, these guys, it's, it's a, it's a, at the moment, it's a, uh, it's a small pot of money available to those companies. There, there, there will only be one or two commissions a year, I'd say, tops. Acme did run, which was brilliant. Mm. And at the moment, they're in development. And the thing is, develop or die, you know, you have to be thinking ahead all the time, ahead or ahead or ahead. And if you're a small production company with very limited resources, mm. it's very difficult to spread the money around, spread enough bread uh, on the waters to get the feedback, to get the program ideas back that you want. Yeah. So if there was a bigger pot of money, you could develop more programs okay. and have more in development. So let's, let's look to the future. You know, you've, you've outlined, outlined what success would be for you. I mean, there's a few initiatives around. Um, how important is monitoring going forward? Because broadcast, broadcast and City University are setting up Diversity Watch to count the numbers. Is this with Channel 4 as well? I'm not sure if it's with Channel 4 as well. I think Una's been, been pressing for monitoring. Una King has been pressing 
uh, for monitoring for a very long time. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important, and it's, it'll be a self-declaring thing. So if you're making a TV program or a film, you have to declare, um, self-declare the ethnicity uh, of your demographic, of the, the demographic of your crew. Mm. So everybody will have, have to self-declare their ethnicity. And this is something that goes on in the, in the national, in the health and in law and order. So it's not a new thing. Uh, and these figures, we'll be able to drill down from what skill sets have done already. Because I mean, mm. remember, my speech was generated because of the CDA, because of the, the, because of skill, the skill set, set figures. figures, which was a snapshot of one day in our industry. You know, so imagine if we had a year's worth of data of all of these production companies having to say, these are the people that work on our, on our show, mm. and this is the percentage of our, of, of our crew that were black or Asian or female or whatever. It'll be an amazing story. And you know what? I think that we will be shocked and shamed by the outcome of those figures when they do come. So monitoring is really, really important. But should the monitoring have teeth? Because if I understand it correctly, the CDN, as you say, it will be self-selecting. You'll have to be self-declaring. It used to be that the ITC made it part of the law. I think one of the you, things that we're pressing- Ofcom doesn't. I think one of the things that we're discussing with Advasi and with Ofcom uh, soon is the idea of accountability. Yeah. So that they, that the, the companies will, it's something that they're gonna have to do. Yeah. And uh, I think this will really, really push the needle of the conversation a ways down the road a bit. Mm -hmm. um, if it's something that Ed, Ed, who's already promised that he wants it, he wants them to be accountable, and he wants to be the person that says, look guys, you've all gotta do this, then I think you'll see that uh, people are gonna have to do it, and that's gonna be fantastic. So would that be part of your successful picture, that they're accountable, it's something they're legally obliged we're monitor, to do. We're monitoring, all these production companies are legally obliged to participate in this because it's part of what we're trying to do. And then when the results come through, then they'll have to act. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Trevor Phillips that said the other day at this meeting with Ed Basie that uh, they've done some research and they've found that banking is more diverse mm. than the, well, that's shameful. Banking is more diverse than the the cultural in, uh, TV industry and film industry in this country. Uh, that's got to change. But if I'm running an independent company, I've yeah. got commissions left, right and centre. I'm not really particularly worried about diversity. The bottom line is good. I've made profits. The UK TV industry is one of the most successful in the world. Had a 4% rise in exports last year. I can't remember, I think it's 122 billion pounds it's worth. What's wrong with the picture? Why do I need to change anything? I'm a successful business. I'm contributing to the UK economy. Why do I need to do anything differently? You need to change things because at the moment, the makeup of your company is probably demographically unfair. The makeup of your company prob yeah, probably does not Life is unfair. Reflect. Life is unfair. I guess, but you know, I'm not just saying, oh, it's unfair, you've got to help us because, but you know, I had 30 years in, in this industry where I would go to meetings and never see anybody that looked like me. Mm -hmm. 30 years. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's shameful what's going on. And where are we? Where are we in this? Why don't we, why don't we, when are we going to do something about it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, yeah, all right. If you've got that company and you're making all that money, you can do what you want. But these things don't change unless it happens from the top, you know. And it, I think there's a social responsibility that you're not fulfilling probably. And if you're looking at your company and you're looking around and there's sort of one Asian person or there's one black person working there, then you probably need to do something about that. It's a social responsibility. Mm. I can see that social responsibility is on the BBC because it's a public body and it's part of the charter and it's supposed to reflect society. But if you're making that money, you ain't gonna do <laughs> shit. I know where you're coming from. <laughs> I'm trying it's to make true. those money makers it's have a true. conscience. <laughs> it's true. Well, you guys got to have a conscience. You got to look at your company. You got to look at the demographic makeup. You got to go, damn, a lot of white folks here. Let's do something about that. You got to change it. Because when you represent globally, mm. think about how proud we were when we watched Team GB. You know, the Olympics, people went nuts in the Olympics because of the how racially, demo, you know, it was fantastic, the Olympics. Ah, woo, Mo Farah, woo, we loved it. And that feeling could be every day. You could have that feeling every day in your company mm -hmm. if, you thought, if you thought Danny Boyle style.
Yeah. Have you thought about having the demographic makeup of your production company be more the way society is? You could have the Olympic effect. Every you could walk <laughs> into work, people go, "Whoa! Look at my company! Wow! A lot of gay people here. A lot of black and Asian people here. Dudes in wheelchairs. Whoa! I feel good about myself. High five myself. Woohoo! You'd feel good about it. And but, okay, go when on you then. represented abroad, when you went to America to pitch your programs to American broadcasters, your company would look very, very cool. Mm -hmm. You know, when we go abroad and we represent to America, I think it's very noticeable mm -hmm. when we are unrepresentative of our country, when our companies do not represent the racial makeup of Britain, which is 14.5%, you know. I also was on for the 0.5 person. <laughs> is it going to be a black Tyrion from Game of Thrones? <laughs> and this was already pre our debts. You know, this one little guy. Um, if we're not holding a mirror t up to our society, that yeah. is a social wrong. Yeah. And when we represent globally, we need to do that because the world is watching us. Yeah. And so we, we have a duty to... Um, we have a duty to the social makeup of our country to represent properly. So if I'm, you know, Mr. White production company and I, I hire Len, can I go for that pot of money? Now I've got Len on board. I've got Len and Eddie in the, you know, they're working as producers for me. Can I go for that pot of money? Um, well, uh, th there'd be a set percentage of BAMEs that you'd have to have mm. in your production company. So but they come in for six months. But once, you've got, once, you've got the once you've got that, yes, you could go, go for that money. But mm. you'd be monitored, you know, you'd, you'd be a self-declaring company. Mm. So you'd have to say, here are the people that are working in my company, and yes, that makes me eligible for that money. Yeah. Revolving door, though. Yeah. You go two in, two out, <laughs> two in. Two. That's what they say. <laughs> that would change, wouldn't it? Moving on to the next question. You talked about... I'm an optimist, Eddie. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm an optimist, too. Um, but I, I want to talk about an area that um, is of concern. You, you talked about the black and Asian communities or people of colour needing to also participate in the debate and to come forward and complain. I know from talking to colleagues that when you're employed at somewhere like some of our larger corporations to kind of wave the diversity flag and talk about fairness and responsibility isn't necessarily going to help your career. Now, how do you address that? What, you mean when they say we're a bit chippy? Yeah. He well, moans a lot, he's bit, got a chip on his shoulder, a bit chippy. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think it's, it's difficult if you're the only person there. It's very difficult. Mm. You know, there, there will always be those people who are, you know, there's one guy there. <laughs> one woman there, she's at her desk and she's going, I better not say anything, yeah. I better just keep my head down. But it's, it's um, what do you do? It, what you do is you, you cluster. I mean, there's a, somebody said to me the other day, there's a reason why the Impressionists kept painting food. It's because they were always meeting up and talking and discussing the issues that, about their art, about their creativity. They met up regularly and discussed what they were creating. And I think that what would be exciting is to see a clustering of talent, a clustering of professionals, a networking of people getting together and going, you know, what, what's it like at your company? What's it like at your company? How can we change this? And, and people tipping each other the wink to, there's a job going, why don't you, you know, it's something that BAMEs have done on and off over the years, but we, we haven't really done it that successfully. And we need to, I think we need to take a leaf out of some other, other, other organizations, books, for instance, Women in film and TV is incredibly forceful mm. in the way they present their case about <coughs> the glass ceiling, about women in our industry. And I think they, when they push, they are heard. And I think we could take a leaf out of Women in Film and TV's book because um, we need to learn from them about how they've clustered, how they've networked, how they've created their, mm -hmm. their, um, their charity as well as they have industry speakers coming to talk to them throughout the year at different events. And uh, we, need to, we need to start doing that. We need to get together. We need okay. to stop being apart and get together. And I think it's really important that the audience do that too. If you're vex, then do something about it. And okay. we're going to get to what you can do a bit yeah. later. Okay. Now, uh, the TV Collective is a collective of people, black professionals in the, in the media. Uh, and we've taken a look at uh, some of their opinions. And there's a short film on this. Okay. You wouldn't believe some of the things that have been said to me. You're not like other black people. How do you wash your hair? No, I can't sit in my cab and wait for Maurice Stewart to come out. I work here. 
Wow, I didn't expect you to speak so well. You're not the right profile to go out on a shoot. You must have slept with loads of women. You're black. You don't drink. All my other Muslim friends drink. Do you mind staying late? I need to get home early. My nanny has an exam. She's black, so I'm sure you'll want to help. You're not right for the lead, but it'd be good to keep you in for colour. If you win the lottery, you'll want to go home to Jamaica. Um, actually, I'm from Croydon. I love working in telly because it gives me the power to reach unlimited audiences. I love working in telly because I'm surrounded by great storytellers. I love working in TV as it gives me the opportunity to change minds. I love working in television because of its collaborative nature. I love working in television for the chance to play characters that different people can relate to. My screen dream is to work on a production where I'm not made to feel like an outsider. My screen dream is to one day see someone like me as Director General. My screen dream is that there is more funding for filmmakers from different walks of life. My screen dream is when ethnicity is not seen as a gamble. My screen dream is to prove that all cultures can be part of our whole culture. My screen dream is when I don't have to dilute who I am to fit in. My screen dream is that a black and Asian person can work together on the same programme and nobody assumes it's about race. I have a screen. <laughs> that's great. I mean, you've got to acknowledge the work that's being done here of the TV collective. Yeah. 60,000 members, a huge networking organisation. There are other organisations out there like Becom set up by Leon Mann, Media Diversified Online. Uh, there are people getting together and networking and trying to bring about a change. And I just don't think many of the mainstream broadcasters, mainstream production companies even know they're there. So how do we, my, my question to you then, Eddie, is uh, <laughs> do, do, do all of those, do all of those, do TV Collective and all those other guys you mentioned, mm. would it be better if we all just made one big networking organisation? How uh -huh. would that work? Because I, I think that the, the bigger you are as a lobby, uh -huh. the more powerful you are, the more voices that you've got, the, the more heft you have. Yeah. And I think that um, when, we're all, when we're all working in a disparate fashion, um, we have a little bit of impact, but suddenly when we come together, suddenly they, people have to listen. And I, I would implore us to find some way to unite, as, as it, rather than have lots of different groups, find some way to, even if it's once or twice a year, everybody get together in one big room and have a big row. <laughs> <laughs> but there is, there is a body of change, as, as we've recognised, um, People are going online. One of the most successful is this organisation. Yeah, TV this is great. Uh, media Diversified, campaigning again in the media. And BCOMS, which specialises in sport. Uh, there are people like uh, Inspirational You, trying to mentor young people. They all have chosen to go elsewhere rather than to fit into the mainstream, which is kind of what you've been advocating. They've kind of had enough of that. Ah. Well, I think, I think both things work. I think if you're vexed enough to go off and just do it yourself, mm. God go with you, bless you. Um, I think if we're going to have an impact on the mainstream, mm. we have to be strong, we have to get together, we have to pool our ideas, and we have to go that way. Because you're not going to be a part of the mainstream if you go that way. Mm -hmm. um, and there's not, you know... So you, there's you a, listen. There's an argument for indie, and there's an argument for being part of the mainstream. Yeah, you know, Barry so Gordy, it's Malcolm X, and well, Barry Gordy Martin. was the sound of young America. He wasn't. The, it wasn't the sound. No, of it wasn't. The, it wasn't the sound of young black America. It was the no. sound of America. Mm -hmm. And there's an argument that says, um, to really affect change, we need to affect it in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that if you're, if you're too tired, mm -hmm. if you're tired, 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 <laughs> tired, then you know create your own thing and do your own thing and punch through that way. Mm. If you're talented enough, it'll, it'll get through. But I'm worried about the people who have worked in the mainstream, hit the glass ceiling yeah. and just thought, I'm going to retrain. Yeah. I think those people need to be wooed back into the industry to make a positive contribution mm -hmm. and to mentor the young people that are coming up because there's no doubt about it. Um, I saw that... Um, on Youngers, for instance, Big, mm. t big Talk are 
doing a diversify thing there, diversity mm. thing there, where they're trying to get people in, mm. they're trying to do training, and that's commendable and that's great. But I think that there has to be a place for the people that are already here. Exactly. The people that can already do cinematography, the people that can already do sound, the people that can already do accounting and line producing, all of those experienced, vastly talented people who have decided that they can't feed their family anymore because yeah. there's, no, there's got to be room for those people to come back into the industry and contribute and mentor the young people coming up. Yeah. We are already there. Let's utilize what we've got already. Yeah. So. Would you be happy, You've, I mean, you must be commended for taking this leadership role or having it thrust upon you in this way. If we wanted to bring together all these separate organisations that are probably tweeting and watching, you'd be happy to be a kind of a figurehead to take their con Not a concerns? Not I'll, I'll be with you. Be with you? Yeah, I'll come with you. I'll come and look, say stuff and be there and do things. But, you know, it's got to be a, if it's going to be a plan, then it has to be a, a coherent one. <laughs> And everybody has to be together on it. And, and the reasons for doing it have to be the right reasons. Okay. No point just being militant for militancy's sake. Yeah. It's important that we uh, compete a at a standard. Hmm. And we, you know, to be accepted at the mainstream table is a big deal. Hmm. And uh, if we're going to go for the, if we're going to push for the ring fence money, which I do think is a good idea. Okay. And by the way, um, this idea was thought about and put together by a group of media professionals who mm. have thought long and hard about it. It wasn't just oh, me. Bright guy. And we said to, we said to uh, the BBC, who are, who are, as I say, listening, mm -hmm. that look, if you've got a better idea than this, come with it. Yeah. Let's talk about it. It's about having a conversation about how to change. Yeah. It's not just about, we've had this idea and we must do this. No. It's about, let's have the conversation. Okay. And the conversation is proceeding, okay. even as we speak. Well, the conversation's been happening online. Someone sent us a tweet and saying, is the change in how diversity is treated in the media more likely to happen now that we have a Secretary of State who's not white? Should it matter? That's Mr. Javed who I was think it's muted. Gonna, I think that can't hurt. That can't hurt. Uh, I have to say that uh, Ed Vasey's involvement in this has been extraordinary. It's his own interest. Ed Vasey is, goes to the theatre, watches movies, and he just noticed that whenever we went to the theatre, the black and Asian quotient of the audience was very, very low. Whenever mm. we went backstage uh, after a play, he noticed that there weren't very many black or Asian staff. And he genuinely was interested in why. Mm. And similarly, as far as television is concerned, he was shocked at the, the, the 2,000 people that have left the industry. And he was shocked at the levels of employment. Mm. And he wants to effect change. But I do think that... Uh, uh, yeah, I think it will change things. Can't hurt. Okay. Um, we've got a tweet from Samir Shah, owner of Juniper, one of those uh, top rating Hello, Samir. <laughs> black uh, production companies. He says, what do you think of people from BAME leaving the UK for the US looking for work? Well, I think that black flight has been a, uh, something that has been noticeable over the years, hasn't mm. it? And it's not just, ex it's not just film people like Idris Elba and Chiwetel mm. Ejiofor and Marianne Jean-Baptiste and David Harewood and Tandy Newton and all <laughs> of those. Best. It's not just those guys. It's people behind the cameras as well. Mm. Um, you know, Barbara Meal uh, w w is working in cam uh, Canada. Um, people have just decided that there's not enough to do here. Let's go. And why wouldn't you? If you're a talented individual, if you're a talented producer or writer or, or a script editor or line producer, why wouldn't you go where the work is, yeah. frankly? Um, I think it's... I think it's common sense if you're Idris Elba and the last thing you did was doctors to kind of go, do you know what, let's go and see where there is work. And America is a big place, you know, and you might get a chance. The demographic, the minority is bigger there. Mm. You might get a chance to be in something and he auditions for The Wire and he gets it. And you audition for Without a Trace if you're Marianne Jean-Baptiste. Marianne Jean-Baptiste is nominated for an Oscar and then comes home and he's waiting to be asked to do something else. Well, that's wrong. Mm. She up sticks and goes to America and boom without a trace. Archie Punjabi's and The Good Wife. You know, it's, you can, you know, and they still, you still have to be good. Mm. It's, it's our best people. You know, it's our, but you still have to be good to get the work, but people are going over there. David Harewood, two series of Homeland. Mm. And he brings me the other day and says, I'm in, Amer I'm in New York making a film because there's nothing down for me in, in, in Britain. Why? After two series of Homeland, why isn't David Harewood having his door knocked down, people saying, please do something. Mm. Now, you know, the converse is true. 
Lenny James, mm. uh, line of duty, brilliant. Yeah. Lenny James is coming back to do things here, and that's good. Idris comes back, uh, Idris Elba comes back to do Luther and wants to be involved in making mainstream programs for Britain, so that's great. But, you know, we need to do a bit of this. Yeah. We need people to be colour brave when they're casting, uh, not colour blind. Mm -hmm. We need to change that. We have another tweet. Some people say, what happens if every minority wants some of that ring-fenced money? Hooray! <laughs> That's but good, right? Everyone gets a little bit. Well, yeah, I can only wave the, wave the flag for, I said this when I did yeah. the RTS speech, you know, I'm, as a person, as an as a Afro-Caribbean person that grew up in the UK and had the father come over here on arm, I bought. Um, <laughs> Not I, tempted to go to the US? Yeah, I'm like, I, I want to work. Mm. I want to create. I'm a, I write, I create, I, I want to direct like everybody, my, you know, everybody, my milkman wants to direct, everybody wants to direct. But I want to you be- You still have a milkman? I want to be in things. <laughs> I want to be in good things. I want to mm. do good work like everybody else. Mm. And uh, yeah, man, if you're a minority, do stuff. If you're an Eastern European and you want to do stuff, do stuff. We want to be seen like everybody else. Yeah. So it's, yeah. If you're a minority and you're in this country, you're going to be pissed off because you're being overlooked. You know, and, and by the way, you know, uh, God bless Twitter. I went on Twitter to look at the reaction to the, the BAFTA speech, mm -hmm. and uh, I wasn't surprised, but there was a lot of people going, well, if you don't like it, you should go back to Africa, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, I'm not, not from Africa, London. I'm from Dudley. <laughs> exactly. You know, and so, but I, I want to be part, I'm, I grew up here, and I want to be part of what's going on here. Yeah. I want to be, I want to be in Broadchurch. I want to be in Peaky Blinders. It shouldn't just be Benjamin Zephaniah wandering around. <laughs> <laughs> we've I got love another, Benjamin Zephaniah, We've got another way. tweet here. Can we really trust the BBC management when they've reneged on so many past promises on diversity? You've seen Tony Hall, what do you think? Um, I have to tread carefully here because I'm okay. speaking on behalf of the 2000, not just me, but I, mm. I felt that there was a willingness to speak. Mm -hmm. I felt that there was a willingness to reconvene at the end of April, which I thought was brilliant. Mm -hmm. That's soon. Mm. Um, I thought there was a willingness to, to do things. And I think the BBC are very aware of all of the criticism, they, I mean, they take a hammering mm. most days in the press. Uh, you know, they, they, they get a lot of stick. And I think they're trying to right some wrongs that have been going on for far too long. Mm. They, you know, and it's like a massive oil tanker, isn't it? You know, them, oh, yeah. one of them big, big oil tankers that take three days to turn around. It's going to be a while. You know, when I look at the yeah, lady, Len, when I look at the Ladybird Book of History and I see that the Hundred Years War was this long, that 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 bit where black Asian minority ethnics were not included properly in the mainstream of television is going to be that long. And we're in the middle of it now and we're vexed and wanted to change. But it's going to be a while. Yeah, but for people who have had careers throughout that time, that's a talent wasted. Yeah. And what's the answer to that? Well, let's make a noise so that they don't ignore us. You know, if we are, if we are an educated, skilled group of people, um, um, and you know, and we can and we can upskill. So the young people who are geeks, who are IT literate, can can mentor the older people who aren't so IT mm. literate. The older people who've who've done line producing and associate producing, and they've done this and they've done that. Mm. They can mentor the young people coming up. We can all help each other, mm. but we can't do that if we're not together. So yeah. we need to. I, I believe that we we need to present a united front, and only then can we move forward and start pushing the door wider okay. open. And we, and we shouldn't just be lambasting the BBC. Or no, it's, a, it's, a, the it's BBC. an industry-wide well, industry malaise. It's not just the BBC. You saw Peter Fincham. What was his reaction? Did he invite you back at the end of April? Yeah, he did. Peter Fincham wants to talk about ITV and how to change things there too. And he's not just talking to me. I mean, he has um, people of colour, colour working as producers and, and writers and directors, and he is very keen to change the nature of what's going on. But all of these things... I have to say, they do come from the top. So people like Peter Fincham and Tiny Hall and Alan Yentob mm. uh, and uh, Paul Jackson and all of these execs. It, it, They're all men. The, how strange is that? But, <laughs> the, the, but the women want to change it too. Mm. You know, um, Tessa Ross wants to change things. Good. There's there's a there's a there's a feeling that changes in the air, mm. and I think that can only be good. I mean, going, watching the BAFTA Film Awards and seeing Chewie mm. and seeing Steve McQueen. Mm. Uh, uh, the talents there. These were these were this was a singular moment in our in our history but have, we ha have we been here before who were the when, when we got two or three black oscar winners didn't we all think ah oh, this is the change wasn't it um oh who was it said it's broken down the doors for uh, black the, women well, there everywhere. was there was a there was a british moment when colin welland 
when they won an award for Chariots of Fire. The British are coming. <laughs> and then when, De when Denzel and Morgan and all, all those, the black people are coming. And, uh, you know, this, is a, this isn't just some develop or die. So we, A, we need to keep developing new projects, new ideas, new mm. thoughts, new programs all the time so that we don't just make one thing and we get nominated for things and then, you know, three years later after Small, after small Island, where's the, <laughs> where's the next thing? Come on, Vicky. We want a next thing. Okay. We can't We've got the next text. Uh, this is from Beck to uh, the craft union. How would the adoption of Henry paper proposals meet the need for B, I hate this word, B-M-A-E workers. Say VEX. Yeah, <laughs> for VEX workers to be integrated into the mainstream. Well, this is what you've been talking about. Yeah, I, I, I think it's just a matter of, A, it's from the top. So it's HODs, more yeah. HODs, more heads of department, more commissioners, more green lighters. Would more you want a commission? More decision makers. What do you want to make? I can't even make breakfast. What do you want? <laughs> I'll just have episodes of The Wire and Game of Thrones and... <laughs> I, love, <laughs> I love Game of Thrones, but only when a nonsense is in it. No, I, I listen. I, it's not. It's about there's people out there who can commission. Yeah. Let's get them guys on board. We just want We want to. We want to. We're talking about inching forward and changing the de demographic slowly but surely until it represents our society in a better way. Mm. Uh, you know, if we can't do that in 2014, we might as well just give up. And I don't want to give up, but I would like to see change before I die. Then I, I think, you know, we've, we've tried to question you and interrogate you a bit, but we, but we really do think, this is on behalf of the TV Collective, we think you're doing a great job and you're to be commended for it. And, you know, but it's not power just me. to you. It's not, it's not just, just me. You. We're speaking for the 2,000 who left the industry. We're speaking on behalf of the people that are hanging in by the fingernails. We're, we're, think, we're speaking on behalf of the people who are... Uh, who are white and are in charge, who want there to be change. We're speaking on behalf of the people who aren't sure whether they want change, but probably think it's a good idea. We're speaking about the people who are ignorant, who don't want anything to change, <laughs> and who love Midsummer Murders, <laughs> and they love crinolines and mob caps. We're speaking up for them too, because you know what? There was a black guy in the Crimson Field the other day, and I was like, damn! <laughs> World War One. I. I know there were black people there, but now people in Britain are going, hang on a second. What's he doing there? Is that there? Fraser James? What the hell is he <laughs> doing in this? And there's a guy, there's a mixed race guy with post-traumatic stress disorder lying in that bed with a bandage around his head. What the hell is he doing there? You know what? When programs like that start to be inclusive and also behind the scenes, when you arrive on a set, when you see a sound man or a grip or a DOP or somebody running around or, or a first, I'm a... Uh, I met a black first the other day. Do you know how many black firsts there are? Probably that guy. Mm -hmm. I'm wrong. I bet you I'm wrong. I bet Simona go, well, actually, <laughs> she'll whip out the Rolodex and show me how many black firsts there are. <laughs> but that was the first black first I'd ever seen. Okay. And I was over the moon. You know, these, these are little things that could happen. And it, it's so cool when it does happen. Lenny, ja <laughs> Lenny, Lenny James. Lenny James. No, no. <laughs> no, no, don't I'm the do other that. Lenny. Don't do, I'm don't the other Lenny. Don't do that to me. It's not just don't. me. Lenny Henry. Thank you very much indeed. Be On behalf of the out. TV Collective, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I am Lenny <laughs> James. I am Lenny James. No, I am Lenny James. Lenny How Henry. funny is that? Thank you, Lenny. Eddie, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.